The air is circulating in here. Our body will normally give off this heat through perspiration. We can be active, etc., and still be comfortable. Air conditioning is not something that is a natural need for us. And it's very interesting because when we expose ourselves to this, the first thing that we notice is an incapacity to move. And when I say that, it is that the first thing that people want to do is that they want to sit down. They don't want to do anything. And then they find out they can't get up after they sat down in that for so long. So it brings about rigidity, stiffness, the loss of mobility, et cetera, which is a dis-ease state. It brings about a dis-ease state. And when you think about it, it does the exact same thing that it would do to water. Water, when it's in its normal state, is fluid. It'll go in any direction that it is exposed to unless you contain it, which is how your body's supposed to be. As soon as you drop the temperature, what happens? It gets stiff, rigid, and fixed. And that's the same effect that any cold environment has on us. We're not supposed to be stiff, rigid, and fixed, nor are we to expose ourselves to cold environments because we do not have a circulatory system that supports our metabolism to do this because remember what I said, we have to have blood in two places at the same time. We have to have blood under the skin because of all this melanin to feed the second brain and blood deep within to supply the deep organs. Now, unlike the African, if you put the Caucasian in ice, they do fine. That's why they were able to ski and play hockey and all the other stuff that they do. Because now all their blood is deep in the body. So therefore, even though it might be cold on the outside, they don't feel that very much because they don't have a blood supply that is taking a lot of information to the skin anyway. But the major areas of the body, their flexible joints, their liver, etc., is staying warm because all the blood is pooled there in their only circulatory system. So when I begin to look at environment and its effect on the structures of bodies and then why bodies were structured the way they were based on the functions they were to serve, then it got very clear to me as a physician that there were some serious problems in the healthcare system in relationship to honoring the uniqueness of an individual's body and what it was supposed to do. Now, how many of your physicians are telling you this? And how many of your physicians are able to basically tell you why there's certain food you should have, why certain vitamins you can't take, and most of all, why certain drugs are very dangerous for you because of these unique structures that you have? Now, you can go to your plant store or your botanical store, and they'll be able to give you this information for any particular plant. Chrysanthemums, roses, petunias, etc. They can tell you what to give them, what not, the food, etc., that they should have. You can go to your pet shop, and they can tell you why French poodles have to have a certain type of food with certain type of protein in them and a certain type of fat concentration, whereas a German Shepherd has to have something totally different. But why not for humans? Now, I thought that was incredible, that we have ecology for pets, ecology for animals, and there's no ecologic system created right now that's practiced to make sure that each unique type of human being maintains and stays the best that it can be. So now, what do you do then if you are paying into and visiting a system that has not seen you or thought of a need to give you the best information for you so that you can be the best. Well, you, can have, you have a lot of choices. The simplest, obvious two, is that you can then demand that the system give you that, or you can do the study on your own and give it to yourself. And so that's why I felt that it was extremely important to put this information down so that you could have it to make some decisions about how you want it to continue to treat yourselves because what is being offered to us and available at this point in time is not honoring the unique attributes and principles that we have, which is why they just tell you right up front, you all don't seem to do well when you come here to get our medicine, etc. Okay, but now they never told you why that you didn't do well, but now you can have the answer. There's a tremendous amount of information to let you know why. I want to bring it to your um, attention about just a few more things. It was real interesting when we started looking at 
drugs, because I was very concerned about that. If I prescribe for you a phenothizing drug, which is Haldol, Elevil, Prolixin, Thorazine, all of these different type drugs because of supposing you're having some problems being able to stay in the orientation of this space and time and this reality. Or if I prescribe for you a hypertensive drug, was I really giving you the proper concentration based upon your, new, your unique chemistry? And when I began to do the research on that, just these two particular families of drugs, I found out that I was doing you a disservice because it has been identified that giving Africans and melanin-dominant individuals Haldol, Prolixin, Thorazine, et cetera, the dosage has to be significantly low because of the amount of neurologic tissue that we have, this drug has a tendency to cause extreme impairment of the nervous system very rapidly. And that it had already been identified that the Caucasians needed a much higher concentration of these drugs to have the effect than the African. Now, for those patients that have come to see me that for whatever reason were diagnosed to have been schizophrenic or had an acute of mild depression, they were on the highest doses of the stuff. And when you looked in the PDR, it was actually the same dose that was recommended that was based for the Caucasian. Thank you. So I was quite concerned about the fact that many of the individuals that I was seeing that were taking this were having problems with memory loss. They were having problems with bladder control. They were having problems with uh, severe paranoia, even far beyond when they got on the medication. And I would ask them to ask their doctors did they know anything about why they should have these kind of reactions. And every time the patient would come back and say the doctor doesn't want to cut the dose down. As a matter of fact, too many times it was increased. So I'm like, oh, this is very, very interesting. It was also noted that the antihypertensive drugs, because of the structure of our bodies, that when they gave us enough to decrease our blood pressure, Everything else decreased. Our desire for sex, desire to eat, desire to think, <laughs> desire to move, and everything else. I'm like, oh, this is like really interesting. So the key here is what are we going to do? Because now it's very clear that there is a whole hospital system that we have been asked to become clients of that do not have the information to be able to treat us appropriately based on our basic chemistry and sensitivity. Are you going to ask the doctor to go back to medical school to find out what is needed for you? And most of them, I don't think, would take that too well. So the key here is that there needs to then be an understanding that there are certain things that you can do for yourself to help you until the system catches up with understanding who they are treating. I was very surprised to find out that because of our structure, we mature almost 50% faster than the Caucasian race. That is to say that they have identified the fact that the African is an adult by age 14. That the African can actually begin to be toilet trained by six months of age. And so therefore, when the African child is held at home and not allowed to go to school until he or she is five years old, retardation has already ensued. When the African child is not asked to begin to become aware of their own neurologic function and memory function at six months old and they're asked to wait till two years old, retardation has already ensued. So now then what are we to do? Because now we have to become aware of the fact that we are living in a system that is not serving us for us to be our best. We can ask the question if that is the system's responsibility or is it ours to give ourselves the best? In closing, it seems like time goes so fast, I just want to relate to you just a couple more things. That in this melanin research, it was noted that many of the opiate drugs, and actually they refer to parts of the melanin as the opio-melanotrophic molecule, that opium, heroin, tetrahydrocannabinol,